Greetings class, I hope you guys are doing well. I am here to talk about um, civil disobedience, which we went over this week. Um, first of all, this is a very, very famous essay. It's probably one of the most famous essays on activism ever. It's very, very important. And if we're gonna be writing an essay that involves activism, you have to read this essay. I'm sure some of you guys have already read it before. Henry David Thoreau was a transcendentalist and that came, the, the person who started that school of thought was Ralph Waldo Emerson, right around the mid 1800s. And what Ralph Waldo Emerson believed is that we had to get back to nature to truly understand who we are. To understand who we are, to understand in nature, we have to get back to, to, to nature. <laughs> And um, he wrote a series of essays on this. And then um, one of his followers was Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau took Emerson's ideas and put them into practice. So he lived, he went out to Walden Pond and lived there. I can't remember how long, but he wrote an entire book about it. And he just decided to do away with society, just go be in nature <laughs> and build his own cabin and live off the land. And that's what he did. And that, that book is, in, the book Walden has inspired many people and inspired the movie Into the Wild, the character, Christopher McCandles. Um, he, he talked about Henry David Thoreau a lot in his own book. Um, and then another trans transcendentalist was Walt Whitman. And Whitman took um, Emerson and Thoreau's ideas and put them into poetry. So these are the fundamentals. And in order to really understand this essay, you really have to understand that. There, what, and there are slight passages where Henry David Thoreau is talking about getting back to nature. Um, he starts his essay with a pretty strong hook. He says, the government is best which governs least. Um, and if you listen to that, it almost sounds like Ron Paul. It, it sounds very libertarian, le less government, hands off. And on one hand, it, it's, well, let me be clear. It's not quite libertarian. What, what Henry David Thoreau meant by that is more, more Plato, Republic. In Plato's Republic, he, Plato was writing that we had to become a society where we became philosopher kings. And if we had to educate ourselves, become knowledgeable. And if we did that, we wouldn't need anybody to govern us. We wouldn't need a mayor or congressman or senators or president. We could govern ourselves. But we can only do that if we're educated. If we sought education and intellect above all other things. And I believe that that is also what Henry David Thoreau was calling for as well. Not no government, but let's govern ourselves. And if we govern ourselves, then we'll be, we'll be better people. And Henry David Thoreau was writing this essay. Um, it was influenced by a couple ideas. One, he was very angry about the Mexican-American War. He didn't like how the United States went to Mexico and took over land. He was against it. He also was against slavery. He didn't think it was right, so he was fighting against that. He was an abolitionist. So those two, two ideas really influence this essay. But that's the very first page of the essay. Um, on the bottom of page two, the essay I provided for you guys is numbered, but he also, I, I remember when we did a survey in class, we said, um, we were talking about um, what is the most patriotic thing you can do? What, what, is, what is something you could do for activism? And a lot of people said, join the military. And I find this interesting. I come from a military family. I, I think it's, it's huge to join the military. I think it's one of the most patriotic things you could do. But Henry David Thoreau stops there because he says that joining the military isn't following your own nature. And if you join the army, you, you might have to fight for a war that you don't agree with or believe in. And if you're fighting a war that you don't agree with or believe in, then how are you following your own nature? Now, that's not my idea. That's not what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. And he actually says a lot of derogatory things there. But just I want to hold on to that idea because I think that can... Um, influence our paper as well. There, there's a lot of differing opinions on that, but it's a very strong point. And then another thing that Henry David Thoreau talked about that we've also talked about is voting. And that is on page five. And I said, if you want to be an activist, you could vote. This is one of the easiest things to do. You could also being patriotic is voting. But Henry David Thoreau says that voting is a gamble. And it's not enough. Um, it's not enough. And that's what he's saying, because you're not making a change. You're, you're not making a change yourself. You're, you're depending on somebody else to make that change for you. And they may not. <laughs> and I, I've talked about this at more at length in class, but he's saying that if you're going to be an activist, you have to go beyond voting. Uh, it kind of goes what Martin Luther King, well, it was Gandhi who said, be the change. 
And I think that Henry David Thoreau is advocating for that as well. Don't let somebody be responsible for the change. You should be the change. You should be the one making the change. And that's his argument. Um, let's see. Um, one of the most famous passages in this entire essay, and if you ever go to quotes.com, just look up random quotes. There's so many famous quotes in this essay. It's very, very famous. But probably the most famous paragraph of them all is on page seven. It's really the second paragraph. And what he does here is he, comp he, he has a metaphor comparing the government to a machine. And he was, he's basically arguing that if the government is corrupt and there's nothing you can do about it, then just let it go. It's going to wear itself out. But he says if the government has a pulley or a lever or something that you could pull to rip the machine apart or break the machine down, then he says to break the law, which is a pretty strong point. He's saying break the law. But he, he's, but we have to be careful here. He's not saying um, go, drive 100 instead of 65, right? He's not saying that. But he's saying if the government is hurting other people or causing you to hurt other people, then you should break the law. If it goes against your consciousness, that's, that's when you should break the law is what he's saying, right? But that's a very, very powerful paragraph. And then in the next paragraph, I like this as well. He also says that we can't spend our time fighting. We, we can't spend our whole life fighting too much we got, we got a short time on this planet so you have to choose what you're going to fight and you should only fight the things that that are, are hindering your freedom and that's what he says so he's not saying fight everything and cut, break all the laws he's saying break the laws that are hindering your freedom and hurting other people right so that's an important phrase that he says too um i was i'm going rather quickly through this essay it's a long long essay um but um, it's really page 10, probably through page 13, which is a core of the essay. And what happened was Henry David Thoreau had to go to jail. And the reason why he went to jail is he refused to pay his taxes because he felt his taxes were going to the Mexican-American war and he didn't want to pay money for that. He thought it was unjust. So he, he, he decided not to pay and he didn't pay his taxes for six years. He was in jail for one night. This whole essay was written about going to jail for one night. And I mentioned this in his class, but, but Henry David Thoreau is dramatic. He, he's a crybaby. He says a lot of crazy things at times, but that's, we have to talk about why this essay was written, that's it. And um, it's interesting, his aunt bailed him out. He's only there one night. But there's a couple things I'd like to mention here. One. If you read prison literature, if you read the, the literature of Nelson Mandela, if you read the literature of Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King Jr., you'll hear several phrases that, that, that echo from this essay where Henry David Thoreau says, you can imprison me, but you can't take away my intellect. You can't take away my soul. You can't take away my body. There, there's only certain things you can take from me. You can take away all my material possessions, but I'm still going to be me. You can't take that away from me. I'm bigger than this. And my cause that I'm fighting is bigger than this. I've seen that in a lot of different writing. And I think it comes from him. I, I think he was a primary source for that. Um, he, another thing he says that's really interesting. He says after he got out of jail, he said he, he felt like he paid his due. More than anybody else who paid it financially. He says he felt like he, he paid it. He paid it up, which is kind of interesting too. But there's a lot he's saying. Those are, those are two of my key takeaways from that section. And there's one other part of this essay that I'd like to look at. It goes back to what I said about at the beginning about transcendentalism. And it's page 11 up at the top. He says, um, right at the bottom of the first half paragraph, where he says, I perceive that when an acorn and a chestnut fall side by side, the one does not remain inert to make way for the other, but both obey their own laws and spring and grow and flourish the best, as best they can, till one perchance overshadows and destroys the other. If a plant cannot live according to its nature, it dies. So a man. That's a very powerful quote. And what he's saying is that if a chestnut and an acorn are side by side, one the chestnut's gonna not the chestnut's the chestnut is not going to say, you know what, acorn, I I'm gonna give you the space, I'm gonna move over here. He says, Nature doesn't work like that. It's gonna grow. It is it's gonna overtake that acorn because that's its nature, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna do what it feels it's it's born to do. And he's also saying that we should do what we're born to do, and we should follow our nature. And if you're not following your nature, then you're living a lie. And it's very controversial. There's a lot to say about it. I don't want to get into my own thoughts. I'm just 
um, going over the key points for this essay, but that's something to think about. And in summary, um, this is a very, very important essay. It would influence Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, Gandhi. Um, social justice warriors have been highly influenced by this essay. You probably read it before, maybe in high school. It's, it's a big essay. And I think, well, I know that because we're talking about activism and because in the third paragraph of your own essay, you have to define activism, this is a really good essay for you guys to use. So um, I want to create this video that goes over some of the key parts. I also went over it in class on Monday as well. Um, so that's it. Henry David Thoreau. Thank you for listening.